Hello, I'm Joseph Martin. And I'm John Rizzi. And welcome to Game Cola's recap slash review of the Microsoft Xbox E3 presentation for 2019. As you heard, I have John Rizzi with me today, and we're going to tell you what we thought about the Xbox uh, Microsoft presentation and com- place it in the rankings list of how we thought people did in E3. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so to get started, uh, just generally, uh, it was definitely bigger, grander than EA. That's not a really hard threshold to yeah, pass. For real. The stage looked incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, like having like a really big, cool presentation stage definitely helps with like hype. Um, instead of just like being outside. Last time, a lot of what they had was talking about all these different studios that they um, brought in, that they got acquisitions on. Um, And so I think that the, what they were trying to reach, what their goal here was, is to show the fruits of that labor. Um, So they had a lot of games. They had 60 games that they were going to show off and they did show off 60 games. And even though half of them were like two seconds on screen in a montage. (laughs) Right. That's the thing. There was a lot of games, but not a lot of gameplay and almost no explanation on anything. Yeah, for real. So, like, I mean, if the the chances are that there was something in this presentation that you would have liked just because there were so many things, but there wasn't a whole lot of detail and there was very little um, gameplay. No, I think we just wanted to start off with the first thing they showed off. Out, Outer Worlds game, I believe, was that? Basically, to me, this looks like Space Cyberpunk 2077. I guess I would say, except on a smaller scale, but even though it's in space. Yeah, it kind of gave me Fallout vibes. I don't know. I don't know. Just maybe just because it was kind of like it seemed like it was very dialogue choice heavy. They talked a lot about like choose if you're good, bad or crazy. (laughs) Yeah, it looks looks good, though. Actually, now I'm looking at it kind of reminds me a lot of Borderlands, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, there was some gameplay shown and they talk about they like mentioned the like ethics or whatever system they didn't really go into it at all which is kind of the theme for xbox Mm -hmm. but i mean it seemed interesting uh there was a lot of not that like that game but there was a lot of stuff like that in general where it's like this seems Mm -hmm. like it could be cool but you didn't really tell us that much about it you just kind of showed a trailer and then moved on uh another thing that caught my interest uh well we had ori wisps of the wilds which is an indie game sequel which i thought was cool like it's called getting... Will the Will the Wisps. Will of the I don't even what did I say? War of the Wilds. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where that came <laughs> from. Um. Anyway, it's a sequel to Ori in the Blind Forest. I think is what it's called. That um, is and it's and it's cool to see sequels to any games, and it looks very pretty. Yeah, we saw we saw this at E three. We've seen this for the past three years in a row right now, and this one it finally gave a release date. Which is mm-hmm. February of next year, which is still pretty far off, surprisingly, for a game we've been hearing about for the past three years. The other fun thing was Minecraft Dungeon, which is a Minecraft dungeon crawler that's multiplayer. Again, it looks cool. They didn't really go into it. For At first, I thought it was a roguelike, but like, I, mean, I don't know. It, it's Minecraft meets Diablo. What else are you going to say there? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, you're getting exactly what you're looking at right now. And then there was just like a whole bunch of uh, uh, stuff. I think the net, like they, there were lots of parts where they just started showing trailer after trailer after trailer. And I was just like writing down like, that's this game, that's this game. Um, which again, like those games might be cool, but it's like, I can watch a trailer whenever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, although one thing that did get me hyped, I thought it was gameplay, but then I found out it was a CG trailer was the next one. It was uh, the Blair Witch game. And <laughs> Honestly, I thought that this looked cool as hell, and I'm a huge fan of Blair Witch, the Blair Witch Project, uh, the movie. The other two are forgettable, but <laughs> but honestly, this looked like really true to the spirit of the movie and whatnot. And I I loved all the VHS visual aesthetics to it, and yeah, um, and it's coming out in August. I'm hyped for it, and I hope yeah. it's not an Xbox exclusive. Yeah, it seemed it seemed pretty cool, like a a good solid entry in the horror genre. I'm not a very good at horror person. I get scared very easily, but even I, a plebeian in that realm, could tell that it looked pretty neat. 
So what you're saying is that we should play this together on the channel. Nope, absolutely yep, not. Yep, the I, next, yep, absolutely. <laughs> the next game, like they had some like Jedi Fallen Order, which we saw in E3, yeah. and they didn't really go into it much more. Cyberpunk was like huge for the crowd. First of yes. all, people are really into this game in general, even before this presentation. The aesthetic is like really I cool. I am super into this game. <laughs> You've got robot people, but the big selling point this time was the appearance of of Keanu Reeves both in the video game and at the presentation. My man, Keanu. <laughs> and it's just like, like, first of all, like having a celebrity show up to endorse a game at an E3 presentation is like a staple. Like it happens at least once every year. But he was like in the video game. Like it was his face. And they made it seem like he was like an important character. Like maybe yeah, the he... biggest non-main protagonist. Yeah, it looks like like your protagonist, like best friend or something like that, yeah. which is super cool. I always want Keanu Reeves as my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a that was a good part, and that was it was fun. He came out on stage, and he like it's really easy to tell who and who does not have charisma because like and this he, like Keanu Reeves has charisma. Like he can just be on stage, and like it's entertaining to watch him. While the other people are like. <laughs> just kind of clenching, hoping they don't do something stupid. Keanu Reeves yeah. like, he's got this. It's fine. So it was cool to have him on. Uh, just some other quick stuff. Battletoads game looked kind of interesting. It looked really good. It talked a lot about um, Game Pass. That looked like yeah. a good deal. It wasn't like super hype. It was just like you can save money on video games. That's another trend for me on E3 the past couple of years, is that each like conference is they're like, talking about Oh, our new gaming streaming service. We're going to have it soon. We're going to plan this, that, and that. And I'm just like, I just want my physical games. I don't care about this. <laughs> I mean, people who already have it definitely benefit from it because you get new stuff without much additional cost or any additional cost, depending on... It's not out yet, is it? I think they were saying that they were launching it like either soon or today. I don't remember when. But it seemed like they were about the piece with the PC crossplay type stuff. Like, getting games for PC. I thought that was oh. soon. It's It was either, like, you know, this week or exactly. soon. There was lots of some remake stuff. Uh, when they brought in Tim Schafer, he also had good stage presence, and I kind of yes. wish he was out there longer so that he could talk yeah. about his cool video game Psychonauts too. He had he had good stage presence, and, like, we, he, we really needed more of that at E3 in general. And I would have liked it. The game looks cool, but I would have liked to know more about it instead of just, like, seeing, like... This is what the levels look like. I want to see what it's like to play this video game. I mean, there's probably a lot of people who, like, maybe have heard of Psychonauts as, like, it's a good game, but don't really know what it's about. And having a chance to, like, really see more of that, I think, would have benefited other than just showing a bunch of 10-second clips of a bunch of of a bunch of games. I feel mm -hmm. like having a more of a focus on some of these cool games could have helped. Like, again, the Lego Star Wars game that's going to have everything in it, all of nine main movies. But, like, is it, are they remastering the old games? Yeah. And, like, or are they it's... brand new levels? Obviously, the seven, eight, nine Star Wars movies are getting brand new stuff. But, like, there wasn't any detail. It was just, like, here's Lego Star Wars that yeah. exists. I'm assuming they're remaking all the levels from not just like copying and pasting them from the other games because they did that in Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens which came which came out this is the one for episode 7. They remade levels from Return of the Jedi and I believe Empire also in just like brand mm. in brand new ways so either they're copying and pasting that game and putting all the other movie and remaking all the other movies like that, but because that game came out very recently. But they're de okay, so they're at least definitely not just copying the GameCube game levels over with a no, fresh coat of paint. Okay, no, no. that was my concern. If they're not doing that, then I pretty sure the Dragon That's Ball game looked cool. Like it's a single player game, though there was and like you do all the fights. There was a little bit of like, how many times have we done? The Saiyan Saga and the Frieza Saga in a video game at how this many times point. How many times have we done Dragon Ball in a video game? Because um, honestly, this looked no different to me than any other Dragon Ball game that came out, even though it is an RPG. <laughs> right, that's the thing. I was like, is this an another fighting game? Because it looks identical to it, but it, I assume it's going to be different because it's called, I think it's called Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, which is Goku's yeah. Saiyan name, if you're not familiar with the animes. And I mean, yeah, it kind of just looked like a single player version of the fighting game condensed down again we didn't get a whole lot of details on it um lots of other 
uh, mini game. I think some other cool ones that people were talking about. Twelve minutes definitely looked intriguing. It was like this like choose your own adventure thriller time loop thing. I made a joke. I made a joke saying saying is that is that how long it takes to beat the game? <laughs> um, <laughs> what they really put a lot of stuff into was the Gears Five stuff. Yeah, they spent a lot of time on that. Yeah, originally it was just like one little trailer of just like of just one of the main character and having like all the other character like personas coming out of her and whatnot. I was like, is that it? That told me nothing about the yeah, game. Yeah, they say they spent a lot of time on people's faces coming out of that one woman, huh? <laughs> yeah, they and spent then they a lot of time on that. <laughs> and then they talked about the game for the next like twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> there was a part where it was just like a solid thirty seconds of pyrotechnics. <laughs> just flashing stuff and then they went into the basement showed off like a co-op dungeon crawler level creator sort of thing where like you can make little short things i think left for dead did something like that i imagine it's going to be something similar to that because you can make like little levels for people to play there was also a terminator tie-in that was kind of just yeah weird. that that was weird but it makes sense i mean they're both mm-hmm. like post-apocalyptic apocalyptic worlds where like a bunch of crazy stuff's going on so it's like hey why not have this little tie-in plus it's a pre-order bonus so yeah i don't i'm pretty sure it's not canon <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> if it was <laughs> they also showed off uh forza with legos that was really cool it was, it was a lot of fun but it, and also just like yeah there's lego cars in it but if you're into forza i think you're i think they talked about it a lot last year too so i think they just didn't have much to say then they just went through a whole bunch of stuff uh fantasy star online 2 i don't know what that's about uh fun fact that game has been out in japan since 2012 and it, and that was the announcement that it's actually finally coming to the west yeah okay that's so, what i thought but they kind of got it i feel like they kind of got it mixed up with their next game which was also being developed it's i couldn't tell which one they like halfway through i couldn't tell which one they were talking about Mm -hmm. uh borderlands 3 was announced jetty will be into that i bet (laughs) and i always wanted to get in the borderlands just lots of game oh yeah there was the one guy who just came kept coming out and giving the same innovation speech all over yeah for real just kept doing that um, they talked about Xbox streaming. Then they got to the the big thing, the big super big thing, the new Xbox. John, how did you feel about the new Xbox? I mean, we didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> but John, they, they loading screens are illegal now. <laughs> they talked so much about how there weren't going to be loading screens, which is very ironic because in the Star Wars game that they showed off, they did the very same thing where he's like going through a hallway and it's clear that it's just a section of him going through a hallway very slowly so the next game would load but they were also talking about how that's not going to happen anymore it's i mean it's fine i mean i don't know (laughs) it was a lot of buzzwords a lot of numbers and computer parts and they called it project scarlet which is a better name than the xbox one i will say that i mean that's not going to be the official name that's just a code name I know, but it's cooler than Xbox One, and I'm going to give them that credit. <laughs> there was very little red in the presentation for that, though. Remember but... when the Xbox One X was called Project Scorpio? <laughs> Look, just let me have my dreams of a cool <laughs> Xbox name, John. <laughs> oh, El- we missed uh, Elden Ring, the uh, collaboration between uh, George R.R. R. Martin who of Game of Thrones fame and... And Hakio oh, Miyazaki. Yeah, those are two cool people that I like, but the game honestly didn't really stand out to me that much. I mean, yeah, it was, it was a just, lot of it was just, it was just a cinematic CG stuff. It was just yeah. a CG trailer, but yeah, I mean, I like, it's a cool, it's a cool idea, but like, I love the aesthetics. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's gonna have two people that they got are very good at aesthetics, but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily make me super excited for the game. It would make me excited if they were making a movie or a book together, or something yeah, that like be... that. But I don't know. That alone didn't really hype me up for it. Um, But the really big thing that they ended off on, we have Halo Infinite, the new Halo game. It's going to be a launch title for Project Scarlet of holiday next year. Which is a good idea. That's a, I think that's a good thing to launch your console with. Like definitely yeah. taking a Breath of the Wild approach. Uh, having a having a good game to put forward on your new console and that everybody's looking forward to the cinematic trailer was fun it looked nice but again it's a cinematic trailer so it's just kind of like 
like, yeah, that's a cool movie that you made. Doesn't mean the game is going to be good. The game, it seems like, though, that they've got a handle on it. They're definitely doing a lot of cool stuff. They've been talking, it was kind of mentioned offhand a couple times, but talking about the Halo being on PC for, like, the Halo collection that's coming out on PC was, like, another cool thing that they're doing with Halo. Mm -hmm. So I think they've got, I would imagine they've got somewhat of a handle on it, but we won't know until 2020. Anyway, but it was interesting. So, John, all in all, what did you think of the Microsoft presentation? Um, a lot of it was recycled and updated stuff from from uh, things they revealed last year. But uh, it was nice to see, again, like Halo Infinite get a release date. Uh, it was su very surprising for me to see Project Scarlet get a release date. Uh, of, of all honesty, even though it's the first time we heard it. Elder Ring is something I'm going to be excited, excited for when that comes out. I definitely want to see more. And um, Blair Witch, I'm hyped for. That was a big surprise for me. And Keanu Reeves is great. But other than that, <laughs> other than that, um, yeah, it was just a bunch, just a bunch of C uh, CG trailers. Which honestly, I'm not. They look nice, as you said, but they don't really tell us much much about anything. They just tell tell us about concepts. And yes, yeah. well, con concepts are cool. It's the execution that matters in the end. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree. Like, there were some cool things in there, but it was a lot mixed in with a lot of just, like, CG trailers that didn't really tell us anything. They just looked pretty. Compared to, e going to our ranking list, compared to EA, definitely better than EA. That's not oh, yeah. really saying much, but, like, there were some good parts of this show, some parts that were that were fun. Uh, even if the rest of it was ho-hum, pretty much all of EA was ho-hum. So I think Xbox, uh, Microsoft definitely ends up above uh, ea in the ranking list and we'll see how well it fares as we continue through the week of e3 so uh if you what? have anything how did you what what did you if you want to tell us what you thought of this presentation uh you can sit, tell us in the comments or on our facebook and twitter and keep an eye out on the gc.net youtube channel for more e3 recap videos see you next time